Hello students. In this topic, we'll be discussing about ordinary differential equation. The differential equations which basically deals with boundary value problem. Now, a first order ordinary differential equation can be solved if one constraint, that is the value of dependent variable, at the initial point, that is at any given point, is known. Now to solve the nth order differential equation, n constraints must be known. Now the constraints can be the value of dependent variable or its derivative at a certain point of an independent variable. There are many cases in which we need to solve differential equation of second order or higher order that have constraints at a specified value of an independent variable. These problems are called boundary value problems and the constraints can be specified at the endpoints or at the boundaries of the domain solution. Like for example, uh, we have a, play, a plate or a wall and there is a rod connected to it. The length of a rod is L. The surface temperature is TA. The temperature at the end of this is TB. The length is L. And the surface temperature is TS. The modeling of a temperature distribution of a, this is basically a pen which is used as a heat sink for cooling object. If the convection and radiation are included in this analysis, then the uh, differential equation which we will get is basically d square t by dx square minus alpha 1 into t minus ts minus alpha 2 into t4 minus ts4 equal to 0. Okay. Where ts is basically the surrounding air temperature. Alpha 1, alpha 2 are the coefficients. Now the equation of this uh, or second order differential equation can be solved once we know the two boundary conditions that is T at x equal to 0 can be said as Ta and second boundary condition can be T at x equal to L is T at x equal to L will be your T B. So based upon these boundary conditions we will be able to solve this differential equation. Clear? So there are certain equations which uh, needs uh, boundary conditions for their solution. Now, further, suppose let's uh, we have a differential equation. We have a differential equation that is d square y by dx square is a function of x, y, and y dash. That is the derivative in the domain of x that lies between a to b. Now the two boundary conditions require for the solution are typically given at basically at the end points of this domain. Now there are common forms of boundary condition. Common uh, forms of boundary condition. Let's suppose we have a uh, a differential equation again writing in the different way in the domain of and at x equal to a let's say we have a boundary condition that is alpha 1 y plus beta 1 y dash is equal to sigma 1 and at x equal to b we have alpha 2 y plus beta 2 y dash is equal to sigma 2 and let's say the solution is cy is a function of x plus dy plus e clear 
So there are three forms of uh, the boundary conditions. First is Dirichlet. boundary conditions where at the boundary conditions x equal to a and x equal to b the alpha part is not equal to 0 but the beta part is equal to 0 that is the derivative terms are missing that is rich rate boundary conditions second is Newman's boundary conditions where alpha part is 0 and beta part is not equal to 0 and then we have the third category which is represented by these equations they are called as Robin mixed boundary conditions that is either beta is not equal to 0. So nothing is uh, 0 in the mixed part. Now the solution as far as the solution of all these uh, different types of boundary conditions are concerned there are two methods which we will be discussing. So the first method which we will discuss today is the finite difference method and the second method is shooting method. So we will see the solution of the first uh, method that is finite difference method and the same method can be applied to either of these boundary conditions Richlet, Newman and Robin mixed. Clear? Now let's see what are the uh, finite difference method. Now let's suppose we have a boundary uh, differential equation. represented as this form where y at a is sigma 1 and y at b is sigma 2 and we have a domain that a is less than equal to x is less than equal to y we're going to divide into n minus 1 grid points and the two boundary condition points are x0 and xn. So we can say that a is equal to x0 which will be less than x1, less than x2 and so on, less than xn minus 1, less than xn where xn is nothing but the boundary point b. Further, xi will be nothing but x0 plus i times h, where h is nothing, can be written as delta x, or which is nothing but b minus a on the number of grid points. That is, we can say this is x1, x2 x3 and so on xi minus 1 xi xn minus 1 xn delta x where xi is i minus 1 into delta x is equal to i minus 1 and delta x will be nothing but xn plus 1 minus xn over n where i will start equal to 1 2 till n and y i can be written as y at a value calculated at x i okay so Let's see the finite difference method, how to solve this thing. 
Now suppose uh, using Taylor series. Let's say y i plus 1 is equal to y at x i plus delta x can be written as y i plus delta y x y dash i plus half of delta x square y double dash i plus 3 factorial into y plus so on clear let's name it as equation 1 y i minus 1 and written as y x i minus delta x is equal to y i minus delta x factorial that is number 2 now from equation 1 is into delta x y2 plus let's name it as equation 3 and similarly From equation 2, we can say y i minus 1 minus y i over delta x will be y i dash minus y i dash delta x y 2. Okay, in fact, I've, I've written something wrong over here. It will be, well, let's say y i minus y i minus 1. So I've taken this on the other side, then multiply by the minus sign. So the negative sign changes over here. And plus 1, that's number 4. Now, if we add equation 3 and 4, if we add equation 3 and 4, what we see is um, on the left hand side, y i gets cancelled up and we are left with. So or adding 3 and 4 so we are left with y i plus 1 minus y i minus 1 over twice of delta x which is equal to y i dash plus the higher order plus the higher order well, let's say that is number 5 so we can see uh, the important part is this part we can ignore the higher order similarly From equation 3 and 4 also, if we add, if we subtract them, like in case we did uh, added 3 and 4, so if we subtract 3 minus 4, so what do we have is y i plus 1 minus y so y i i minus 1 over delta x square is equal to y i double dash plus the higher orders delta x that is equation 6 now if you see equation from equation 5 we have this term and from equation 6 uh, we have this term now this expression can be used for single derivative and this expression can be used for double derivative clear so if we come back to the main equation that is our main differential equation that is y double dash equal to c y dash plus d y plus e so instead of no double derivative y double dash we can substitute uh, this part from equation 6 and for y dash we will substitute the red part from the equation 5 we will put the basically the expressions of y dash and y double dash so upon substituting 
So what we have over here is y i plus 1 minus twice y i plus y i minus 1 over let me write it as h square. We can also use instead of h as delta x. Basically the step size or the interval of dividing the total domain of x. See we can write uh, c i as c d they are the functions of x so let me write c i so y i plus 1 y i minus 1 over twice of h plus okay let me write over here x i and then d is a function of x so we have y i plus e which is also a function of x i okay now if we multiply by the h on both the sides what we have is to c i Now upon rearranging the values of y i y i minus one and y i, what we have is that is this this term this term this term and upon rearranging. So. so this is the expression further uh, upon further uh, let's upon rearranging what we have is let's rearrange it that is minus 1 minus h by 2 ci y i minus 1 that is we multiplied by the minus sign upon rearranging if you multiply by the minus sign with all the sides so what we have is a uh, minus the minus this will become plus this will become plus so taken the minus sign and see so it becomes this part plus 2 plus dhi square into y i and taking the minus sign inside so we have minus 1 plus h by 2 ci i plus 1 is equal to minus ei square okay. now just to rearrange in the order of yi so we have this expression now we'll put the boundary conditions that put i is equal to 1 till i equal to n minus 1 so what we have is if you put i equal to 1 minus 1 minus h by 2 c1 y naught plus clear so uh, now we know that y naught is equal to sigma 1 so we'll put that value over here so we have sigma 1 so we just have two values of y1 and y2 so which can be written as y1 plus is 
equal to sigma 1 that is the first value and then we can go on putting the values further i equal to n minus 1 and so on so we have c n minus 1 y n minus 2 plus 2 plus h square d n minus 1 y n minus 1 is equal to minus h square d n minus 1 minus 1 minus okay not 1 minus let me correct it okay 1 minus h by 2 c n minus 1 sigma 2 so that is the second one so you can see uh, all these equations they are basically equation a equation b all these equations a and b they are reduced in the form of a linear equations which can be then solved using uh, your matrix method so what we have is we'll prepare let's say uh, they are represented basically in a form of ax plus b where a is nothing but delta 1 u1 alpha 2 delta 2 u2 and then we have alpha n minus 2 delta n minus 2 u n minus 2 and then so on alpha n minus 1 u n minus 1 that is a x is x1 x2 xn minus 2 xn minus 1 is equal to minus h square e1 plus 1 plus h by 2 sigma 1 e, e2 and then so on for minus h square e n minus 2 and then we have minus h square e n so 1 plus 1 minus h by 2 sigma 2 so then you can solve this to get the values of x1 x2 and so on okay so this is what the finite difference method is we can use to solve the ordinary differential equations using boundary conditions now let's take a very simple example now solve the heat transfer boundary value ordinary differential equation for a rod of length l of length 1 meter uh, the differential equation for the heat transfer of a rod is given as dt square by dx square minus beta square t is equal to minus beta square t a where t a represents the ambient temperature and beta represents heat diffusivity the values of beta square is given as 16 centimeter minus inverse ambient conditions temperature is this thing now boundary conditions are given t at x equal to 0 is given as 25 degrees celsius and t at x equal to 1 that is the entire at the other side of the length is 75 degrees celsius so let's say that if this is the length l of a rod let's say this is the rod and this is x equal to 0 this is x equal to l so uh, let's divide into three parts so we need to find out x1 x2 x3 the temperature t1 t2 and t3 at these points okay so what we do is uh, one there are three uh, one two three and four sections so h will be total length over four sections so h will be 0.25 or we can say delta x is 0.25 okay so the differential equation is t square over 
dx square minus 16 t is equal to 16 into the ambient is 20 so it's d square t by dx square minus 16 t is equal to 320 this is the differential equation which we have now uh, using finite difference method the temperature can be this expression can be written as ti plus 1 minus twice of ti plus ti minus 1 over h square minus 16 ti is equal to 320 uh, upon rearranging what we have is ti plus 1 minus twice of ti minus 16 h square ti is equal to 320 h square so put the values of h and upon rearranging we have ti plus 1 minus 3 ti plus ti minus 1 is equal to minus 20 clear now put x uh, i equal to 1 put i equal to 1 so we have t2 minus 3 t1 plus t naught is equal to minus 20 now t naught t naught the boundary condition of t naught is given as 25 so this is given as 25 so equation becomes t2 minus 3 t1 minus 45 number one similarly put i equal to 2 so we have t3 minus 3 t2 plus t1 minus 20 put i equal to 3 t4 minus 3 t3 plus t2 is equal to minus 20 okay if we look at the length of the pipe t1 is given this is this was t0 t1 t2 t3 and t4 now t0 is given as 25 degrees celsius and t4 is given as 75 degrees celsius so t4 is we have t4 so if we put the values of t4 we are and we ended up with the fourth equation that is minus t3 plus t uh, minus 95 that is uh, the equation 2 equation 3 now we have three parameters 1 2 3 three unknowns and we have three equations three unknown three equations which can easily be solved so let's prepare the matrix uh, using these three equations let's see these three equations now from equation one we have the matrix minus three one zero from the second equation we have one minus three one and from third equation one minus three we have t1 t2 t3 we have minus 45 minus 20 and minus 95 so we can easily solve this and get the values of t1 t2 and t3 so t1 comes out to be 24.52 28.57 and t3 is 41.5 clear now if we plot the okay let's see the difference okay mm. let's say this is the length of the pipe this is the Temperature length is from 0 to 1. And we have the less to the part. Okay. Uh, this point was at x equal to 0.25, x equal to 0.5, x equal to 0.75. So this was at 25. This is at 75 and let's say these are the values 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.
0.5 and 0.75 corresponding to these values of 24, 28 and that value. Okay. So you can clearly see uh, the temperature values starting at 25 these temperature readings now let's see uh, if we were uh, in the same we see, let's try the same equation same problem using now instead of three divisions let's divide the rod into four segments again let's say x equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and x equal to 5 yeah, that is over here t naught is 25 over here t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 is equal to 75 now let's uh, you know we have four parameters so h will be basically 1 by 1 2 3 4 5 segments so 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 so h is 0 0.2 so let's uh, now instead of there are uh, four unknowns so we'll have four equations again using the matrix method we can solve them and try this uh, problem with the four segments so we have four equations uh, i can give you the values of those four values uh, i've already done it is 22.90 23.72 28.27 and 41.09. Now, let, now let's you know try to plot them using Excel. Let's see the how does it look like in an Excel. So we open up the Excel file. Okay. Now we put X and the temperature reading. Uh, first for the three variables. So X was 0, 0.25, 0.5. 0.75 and 1 correspondingly we'll put the temperature readings so x naught was 25 this became 24.52 28.57 41 .19, and we have 75 and then similarly again we have the x and we have the t uh, where we're going to divide 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1 depending on the edge size and boundary conditions the results which we have the intermediate temperatures that is 22.90 23.75 and one and then we have 75 now let's try to plot them so okay let's name it as when n was equal to 3 we add another one when n is equal to 4 the value of x is between this to this So you can clearly see uh, in the plot the when n is 2 here is okay yeah we can clearly see over here yeah we can clearly see uh, for a length of 0 to 1 okay let me change it Zero. yes no it's okay now you can clearly see uh, depending upon when n is 3 or n is 4 or we can take even take n is equal to 5 uh, the variation of the temperature along the length of the tube clear so this is what was there in this uh, problem so we'll do more problems in the tutorial class 
so that's it with the uh, finite difference method we'll discuss more problems in the tube class thank you so